Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, which is a live Bible question and answer program where you, uh, the radio listeners, have an opportunity to pick up your phones and dial the number 281-837-2222, 281-837-2222, with any Bible questions as well as comments that you'd like to make concerning the Word of God, and get your Bible questions answered and your comments, in fact, heard. Uh, this We want to invite your attention with us to the book of Acts chapter 22. We're going to deal with the subject this afternoon of biblical conversions. We're going to deal with biblical conversions. I believe this is an important topic, as all topics I believe that we discuss, but in particular this one because there are many of you who are listening to this program who have been... Uh, sitting under teaching of men and some of you of women who have propagated uh, many different ways contrary to the Bible on how one must become a child of God. You must understand that there is only one way to be converted or to be born again or to become a child of the Most High God. You and I as mankind don't determine how to make peace with God, or how to become born again or a child of God, we must go to the Word of God and allow God's Word to tell us how we are converted or how we become members of the family of God. Now, we're going to listen just real quickly to the Apostle Paul giving his own biblical conversion in Acts chapter 22 on how he became a Christian. And before I read this, it needs to be stated and noted that there is no one living today that can become a child of God, a Christian, born again differently than the Apostle Paul, Amen. the man who wrote the majority of the New Testament. Here is what the Apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 22 and verse number 6. We will begin there. It is he who is speaking and he who has given his own testimony on how he became a child of God. The Bible says in Acts 22 and 6, And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, I want you to get this, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. I want to stop right there just real quickly and make a point. I want you to notice that it is not Jesus himself who is telling Saul what he needed to do. Saul said that Jesus said, I want you to go to Damascus, and he is going to tell, there's going to be somebody who is going to tell him what he needs to do. What needs to be understood is that now, living on this side of the cross, that the treasure is in earthen vessels. The Lord uses men to tell dead souls what they need to do in order to be saved. Amen. Jesus is in heaven. He is not going to tell the apostle Paul what he needs to do to be saved. He's going to send the right man with the right message to tell him what he needs to do. Keep reading Acts 22 and verse 11. The Bible says, When I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, here we go, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked upon him. Can I say this? Ananias is calling Saul brother, not in the spiritual sense. Ananias is a Jew. Paul is a Jew. Amen. And so Ananias is calling him a brother, not because of their spiritual relationship, but because of a physical relationship that they have, Amen. both being Jews. And so he goes on in verse number 14. And he said, the God, this is what Ananias tells Saul. And he said, the God of our fathers have chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For you shall be his witness unto all men, what thou hast seen and heard. Now verse 16, 
And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Radio listeners, this is the Apostle Paul giving his own biblical conversion on how he became a child of God. Jesus didn't tell him what to do. He sent the right man with the right message, Ananias, to tell him what to do. I want you to notice that Saul was on his knees praying. He had been on his knees praying for three days, and he is still in his sins. The Lord sends Ananias. Ananias says, get off of your knees and be baptized. Why? To wash away your sins. It is in baptism and baptism only where Jesus cuts the sin out of men's hearts. He performs an operation that takes place without the hands of man. Jesus performs the operation. We call on the name of the Lord, an individual who's a sinner, in the watery grave of baptism. And Ananias told Paul he needed to be baptized to wash away his sins. No one becomes a child of God. No one receives the Spirit of God, the indwelling of the Spirit, before he or she is baptized. Every gospel preacher who preaches the truth, the apostles' doctrine, must preach that an individual is not saved until they get into the water. Now that is totally different than what we hear on television and radio programs today, isn't it? We have people who are teaching today that baptism is just an outward sign for an inward grace. You have people who are probably listening to this program that even believe that baptism is the first thing that Christians do. I was taught that lie myself. I was once a member of the uh, 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 Lakewood uh, Church here in Houston, Texas, under uh, the teaching of John Osteen at the particular time. And John uh, and uh, had, uh, did what he called an altar call, and people come down the aisles and uh, he would repeat, have us to repeat a prayer after him. And me and hundreds of other people, we repeated this so-called sinner's prayer after John Osteen. And after we repeated the prayer after him, he told us to open our eyes and raise our hands and thank God that we are now children of the Most High God. It was some time later they took me and hundreds of others uh, to the back room and told us now that we are Christians, that what we need to do... I was once a member of the uh, 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 Lakewood uh, Church here in Houston, Texas, under uh, the teaching of John Osteen at the particular time. And John uh, and, uh, had, uh, did what he called an altar call, and people come down the aisles, and uh, he would repeat, have us to repeat a prayer after him. And me and hundreds of other people, we repeated this so-called sinner's prayer after John Osteen, and after we repeated the prayer after him, he told us to open our eyes and raise our hands and thank God that we are now children of the Most High God. It was some time later they took me and hundreds of others uh, to the back room and told us now that we are Christians, that what we need to do is get baptized in order to receive the Holy Spirit. That baptism is just an outward sign for this inward grace. And uh, now we need to receive the Spirit. And so I and hundreds of other people ended up getting into the water uh, and desiring to receive the Spirit. We got into the water being taught that we were already Christians, that we were already saved before we got into the water. And so they baptized us and told us that at that point we had received the gift of the Holy Spirit and to thank God we took the first step that every Christian takes in order to confirm that they are Christians. My friends, that is totally different than what the Word of God teaches. Amen. The Bible teaches that sinners get baptized and not Christians. Now the number is 281-837-2222. All you have to do, radio listeners, is pick up the phone and show us anywhere in the Bible where a Christian got baptized. That's all you need to do. Show in the Bible where a Christian got baptized. Here we see the Apostle Paul in Acts 22, 16. He's still a sinner. He was not saved on the road to Damascus. He, out of his own mouth, said, go to, Jesus said, go to Damascus, and it's going to be told him what he needs to do. And he sends Ananias 
to tell him what he needed to do in order to be saved. Let me say this before I toss it. There are many of you who are listening to this program, you're going to say that, you know what, well, I've been baptized. But let me say this, as I always will until I go to the grave, that you cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. If you were baptized by a denominational preacher, if you were taught a, 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 a perverted gospel, you need to understand that, my friend, you are still lost. If you got into that water believing that you were a Christian, as I know the denominations teach, Baptist, the Methodist, the Church of God in Christ, and the list is endless. They teach you that baptism is an outward sign for an inward grace. You may have gotten into their water, but let me tell you something. Jesus was nowhere with them, and he was nowhere present in your soul salvation. And what we are telling you on this program today is you are still lost in your sins. You need to be baptized by someone who is not spiritually dead. You must be baptized by someone who is spiritually alive themselves and who have been born again themselves. That is the only way you can become a Christian, by being baptized by a male Christian of the Church of Christ. I, I don't apologize for that. Amen. That's the only example you see in the Bible, is individual sinners being baptized by male Christians who are members of the church, the body of Christ, that we can read about in the Bible. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Brother Stephen Ozan. Now, Henry, I want to ask you something. Now, you told us uh, concerning uh, the false information that was given to you, such as myself being baptized as a baby, a Catholic, which was false. Mm -hmm. They told me I was safe at the confirmation First Communion, which is false. So, Henry, what I want to ask you is, you can you take the time and explain to us how you were converted to Christianity? Yes, what happened to me, and thank you for asking, Brother Ozan, uh, I met my now wife, who is a member of the Lord Church and was when I actually uh, met her, as a matter of fact. And uh, I would visit the Churches of Christ with her, uh, and uh, there was a gospel preacher who, who asked me, would I like to sit down and have a study of the Word of God with him? Uh, I did. I invited him to sit down with me, and he showed me what the apostles and Jesus taught in the Bible on what one needs to do to be saved. And he asked me a simple question. Is this the form of doctrine that you obey? Did you obey this form of doctrine that you heard the word, believed it, repent of your sin, you confess Jesus Lord, and you were baptized in water for the remission of your sins? Were you taught this plan of salvation? And I had to be honest with myself, as all individuals must be, and say that is not what I was taught by John Osteen. John Osteen taught me to repeat this sinner's prayer, and then he told me after the prayer that I was saved, and then he baptized me in order for me based upon him to receive the Spirit. And so I was taught wrong. And upon being honest with myself and looking at the Word of God, I understood that all this time that I believed that I was a Christian, I was in fact not because the Word of God is right. And he took me that very hour. He did not wait. And we went down to the water. I was taught right, therefore I was baptized right. I received the Spirit, and the Lord added me to the church or the people of God that we can read in the Scripture. Praise God. God bless you, Henry. Well said. And someone might say, well, how do we know Henry's telling the truth? One way we know is because he teaches only that as the method of salvation today. Amen. Knowing then that he must have obeyed that, and it can be validated because he continues to teach that and that only because a person will only be able to repeat the things that are in their heart. Now we have a call. We thank Henry because that gets all of us excited as members of the church because that's how we were all converted. And I'll talk about mine in a moment. Let's get this call that's waiting right now. Amen. Caller, can you hear us? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, you yes. can. You're on the air. Go ahead, call. Okay, I, I first just want to thank you, brothers, for the fine job that you're doing. And Thank we know that every week on this radio station, we have a preacher that's saying all you have to do is just believe. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful that you guys did that debate with him and have it on YouTube. Amen. Where we can just go to and follow scripture for scripture about the same subject that you guys are discussing. I just want to thank you, okay. gentlemen, and let you know that you're doing a fine job, and God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, okay. Carla. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Uh, we appreciate yes, that are. brother's thoughts. He's a faithful member of the Lord's Church. 
and we appreciate him dearly. No problem. Now, I want to talk to you about myself. I mentioned that no coming from the uh, Catholic Church, um, we understand that that's a false denomination. Many of you are maybe a part of that. They're about a billion strong plus. And so my wife also was a member of the church as I was dating her at that time. I was in the military. She was in college. Uh, my wife, Frances, uh, we began to talk about the scriptures. I tried to battle her and could not win with any argument I had because I was lost. I used the same type of vain arguments that were taught to me by false believers in the Catholic Church, Thief on the Cross, which many of you are familiar with. God loves you. You're his child because you're born. He created you. Such lies like that. So she defeated those, and another gentleman uh, was a friend of hers from school, was a member of the church. We all began to meet and talk, and they would teach me, and I would bring forth questions. And Brother Paul D. Jones, the minister to the Church of Christ on North Wayside Drive in Houston, Texas, as each Sunday I would go, did an excellent job of propagating the gospel and only the gospel itself. Uh, pointing out the error in other churches, okay. standing bold before the audience, okay. teaching the truth, which many which of you more weaker members of the large church do not do even to this day. And so as I heard the information, uh, my heart was pricked. As I came back from a military uh, maneuver, I came back and I promised the Lord I'd get baptized. And I was still afraid because it would mean turning my back on my family and everything I knew that I thought was salvation. But as I began to walk toward the front, my legs felt like jello, but I had no desire other than to get there before I died, because I knew I'd heard Amen. enough messages to be killed by the Lord had I not obeyed. And they asked me that I believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God, because I'd heard the truth, believed it, desired to change, confession was all that was left, and baptism. And I said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I knew that means I wasn't. So they took Amen. me to the back okay. before the audience. I was dipped in the pool, okay. baptized, but the Holy Spirit, as Paul taught, cut away my sins, Amen. filled me with his spirit, and added me to his church. That Amen. conversion is exactly as we read about in the scriptures. So I couldn't be lying about what I obey because I'm still propagating to this day that that is the only way that salvation is achieved Amen. in baptism as Henry has read in Acts 2 and 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you okay. and unto all your children and to all that are fall, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, he testified and encouraged them, save yourself okay. from this perverted or uh, this, this crooked generation. Amen. Then they that glad to receive his word were baptized the same day. Yes. About 3,000 souls were added unto them. In verse 42 it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Yes. And in the fellowship of who? The apostles. Amen. And the breaking of bread shown by who? The apostles. And in prayer shown by who? The apostles. How to pray as the Lord had taught them. And so therefore, the Lord adds daily, Acts 2, 47, to the church, such as should be saved. So, and as Henry said, the salvation is determined by God and not by a vote, Amen. not by some prayer, not Amen. by some laying on of hands. It is done by Almighty God. Amen. And that's how I came into being a child of God, to be added unto the beloved, as Paul said. Okay. Now, you've got to ask yourself, did your conversion happen like that? Mm. Well, there are big bass drums and bass guitars and girls in the back in choir singing while the audience watches. Okay. Well, there are women dancing with white gloves on and no socks. Is that where you were converted? Did they tell you that we're going to take you to a six-week class and then we'll baptize you? Was that where you were converted? Did they tell you that baptism doesn't save you, you're already saved by your confession? See, I wasn't told that. I was told, okay. when you get in this water, Amen. the Holy Ghost Amen. will operate and save you. Okay. Colossians chapter 2, Amen. verse 8 following. If you didn't do that, you are lost. Amen. If they dipped you in water, that's the, how about this one? Here's a Lulu. Did a weak need gospel so-called preacher pull you aside when all the other members were gone? 
and tell you, look, we need you to get baptized because the rest of the members are talking and murmuring oh, Lord. that you need to get baptized. Yeah, and I, I, I know you're going to okay. go back. Thank I you. hope somebody go back and tell him that I Thank said you. it. Amen. You pull him aside Thank and you. you tell him that lie that, well, just get baptized as Jesus did, suffer to be so for righteousness sake. Did you do that? You're not saved either. Did you get baptized to keep peace in the church? You're full of sin. Your sins are vile. They are in your spirit. And that spirit is in the same flesh that the Lord is going to destroy, but he's going to destroy your soul as well. If you don't get baptized, you're not Christ. Christ was sinless with no God in his mouth. The sins of all mankind, past, present, and future, were placed in his flesh, and that's why the flesh was destroyed. If, if some weak need gospel so-called preacher told you that, friend, I want to tell you, your soul is lost. And I'll tell you that with all the love in my heart. Amen. Because that's going to be an angry, vengeful, burning, fiery furnace heart in God that's going to destroy your beautiful soul that Jesus died to save because of a spineless, weak, filthy, lucre-loving preacher that wanted to add another member at any cost, and all cost. And your soul is a soul that will be lost. And so will his for lying like that. It's an opportunity for you to be saved. You can do what Henry did. You need to be baptized again also because you did not confess with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. What you confessed is you and Jesus are God's Son. And that's impossible until Christ makes you one of God's sons according to the Gospel of John. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Thank you, Brother Elsa and Brother Henry. Uh, a few more thoughts here concerning myself. After uh, disrespecting Romans 13 and the authority that it held uh, and leaving the prison system of Harris County for after three months, I entered into a different system which was another prison called Joel Osteen's, Benny Hinn, Peter Popoff, and Kearney Thomas's Doctrine, which my, my heart was enraptured by it, however, not knowing at the time that it was a deception and a lie while I was listening to it. When I studied the scriptures more and more, I eventually found out that these individuals on the television screen were not sincerely seeking for you to be saved, but they were sincerely seeking after the paper, the green that you have in your wallet. They were seeking for more. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and spirit, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must, audience, ye must be born. Again, that's Amen. a very powerful word, must. Amen. And the idea is that this, another woman came to me that same moment and told me that I just have to believe in my heart that Christ is the Lord and he'll save me but I desire to not seek after her teaching in that very moment because what she was saying was not scriptural and what my brother William was saying was 100 percent correct and that is at that same night I went to uh, the Church of Christ and I my brother Ozan was here uh, closing up the congregation and before he closed we got together for a Bible study and I asked him questions concerning the soul and how does it get, how does it get saved. I asked him to show me the scriptures and after a, a diligent Bible study and all my answers, all my questions were answered by him, and he asked the question unto me, are you ready to be baptized? I said, I'm ready. Man. From that day forward I was baptized. The Spirit of Christ removed my sins and gave me the Holy Spirit. Amen. And afterward I remained faithful even till today. Amen. And from that moment on, Christ has sealed me, and he continues to teach me with the Spirit. Another scripture, a few scriptures that I have, audience, for you to look at. Acts 22, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. After they that received the word, then were they baptized. Verse 
4 of Acts chapter 4 verse 4 how about many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men was about 5,000 so you first hear the word you understand it you understand the commandment that Christ brought you take it seriously according to Mark chapter 16 verse 16 where he gave the scripture he that believed and is baptized shall be saved. He that believed not shall be damned. If you believe that scripture is still in effect and still real today, audience, that should put fear in your hearts to obey that command and go to the original church that you could hear about in the Bible. Those souls that were baptized in Acts chapter 2, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you for, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is a promise that is still here today. You'll be sealed, added to that same body we can hear about in the Bible. Your name will be written in heaven. You'll be sanctified. You'll be with the justified. You'll be with the saints. And the idea is that if you continue to carry your cross on this time, this, this side of time, when you leave this earth, when you leave this body, there will be a home and mansion for you prepared in the heavens. Amen. Audience, take heed. We pray that these conversions in the Bible and how our conversions match the conversions in the scriptures may get your attention so that you may implement and emulate the same commands Amen. that Christ gave him and the apostles gave. Because even as Peter said in Peter 3.21, baptism now saves us. Does now save us. Now save us. Amen. We want to leave the faithful saints with Romans 16.16. 16. The churches of Christ salute you. Amen. You know what? You know what? I was watching the IUIC uh, video. And you know what? Did, did you see what that guy did when he answered that question? Those guys are the worst teachers I've ever seen in my life. They, twist they, are, a lot. they are worse than witnesses. Uh, the question was, Paul said we could eat pork, and he said Paul didn't say that. So he says, Scripture talking about Colossians 2.16. So on the video he says, what Paul was talking about when he said the word meat is sacrifices that you bring. And I said, it includes sacrifice you bring, meat you eat, and everything else concerning M-E-A-T. And if he reads further at the end, Colossians says, why are you subject to audience of the world if you're in Christ? Touch not, taste not. Hell no. Right. Taste not. Yeah. You don't taste, taste. the sacrifice. You, you bring it and they kill it and they do the work. If Water. it's a burnt, they burn it. If it's the other one, they take a portion and they eat. You don't even get to eat that one. Yeah. So the idea is what oh. he doesn't understand is, is that he gave an answer, but those two poor souls, if they were members of the church, God help them because yeah. they were ill-equipped to talk. Yeah. Because they should have asked them, okay, how do you affirm that what you just said? That Amen. that meat right. is a sacrifice only. Yeah. Because Paul says that we're not to be judged in any of but I know they keep the Sabbath, they claim. Yeah, that's what they claim. So he says you can't be judged in that. So well, he just he killed that. his whole his whole doctrinal position was killed. See, the they deal with the innocent. The people who will just listen to what a person exactly. saying. They don't they they see when they talk to us in that debate, all they did was go to new scriptures and start talking and reading. That's it. But see, I'm gonna tell you this from this day forward, I will never ever participate if an individual can deal with nonsense like that okay, gotcha. to where you know where where that individual uh goes because the minute he goes to a different scripture, my joy will be to come back. And say that scripture has absolutely nothing to do with what we talking, talking about. about. You're gonna answer this, this question, question on this debate is over. Amen. We're gonna you, pull the plug and walk Amen. out because you're unqualified Amen. to discuss Amen. Bible subjects. And as I tell shock and any other those other false people, Amen. any black Muslims, yep. any Muslims, Amen. any Baptists, yep. you're gonna answer the question posed, right. and if you can't, the discussion is now over because right. you have Proven you're not a Christian, Amen. and so therefore we're wasting time yes, talking it, unless you're desirous to be saved. Amen. Would Amen. you like to talk about how to be saved? Now, Amen. see, you end up wasting a lot of time because they jump, they jumped, and they jump. You know, and the idea, and then that's what gives people the thought they want in. They know they He didn't he address he more. that subject. He, he did not words answer it. He brought up all doesn't mean all. Well, when does all doesn't mean all? <laughs> he can't validate it because he's got to know the context. Is the right, context right, saying all? all. Right. All of Judea was right. baptized. Yeah. Pilate wasn't baptized. Thank you. 
There but Potter didn't want to get baptized. Thank you. So all of those now who heard John the right. Baptist and go. wanted to obey were baptized. That is the, oh, all the Bible is talking about. It's not talking about every living creature in Judea. And it didn't say every living creature in Judea. Didn't say that. Thank you. It didn't, didn't, say that. It didn't, it didn't even say preacher. that. So the Bible records that. And see, what they're trying to do is make a play on words because exactly. they are ill-equipped. But the problem is, the only people who are listening to them is a person in sin. Right. But the, the trouble is, our soul is to see those innocent souls, which will go either way That's you right. tell them. Yeah. yeah. But because they do go either way you tell them, all their half will listen to the church and get strong enough to obey yes, the word for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so Thank you much. Welcome. Appreciate you, no Sarah. No problem. Here's, here's a here's you a have scripture. to go on in about 40 seconds. Oh, okay, okay. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to Peter, to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So if they say that that represents Gentiles, and they say that Gentiles means Jews, what does right. the, the rest of the animals mean? Yeah, thank because, you. Because they used to make Good a proselyte, they used to make a proselyte from yeah. the Gentiles, so if he's never done that before, then what do the, the other animals mean? So, mm. don't mean anything. Yeah, I guess that? they're going to eat Cornelius, huh? Yeah. He says it only applies to them receiving Cornelius. So they're going to eat him? Are they going to eat him? Mm -hmm. You know what? See, see what they're saying is the shallow isn't real. Wasn't the temple real? Hmm. Wasn't the bullocks that brought hmm. real? The shallow is always real. It's just not spiritual. It's not mm -hmm. the final spiritual message. Right. It pertains to spirituality in that context, but not what the New Testament was going to talk about. What's the line on screen? The IUC kid. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. See, that's what's wrong with the world. That's why there's more lost than there are saved. Sure. Number one, Personally, God should be glad that I'm even interested in him. That's the mentality of the man. Wow. I mean, he's he's he's, he's lucky I'm sitting there listening to somebody say something about him. And what he just mm. said makes sense to me. Mm. But see, the question is now when you go before him, you're going to be begging and crying for life. Just like you beg and cry when the doctor says you have cancer. cancer. Mm. Or your wife was just killed in a mm. wreck. Right. You cry like a baby, big muscles, tattoos, and mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Or your baby was found dead in the bed. Mm -hmm. Or your mother was found dead. Oh, or they just threw your kid in jail and he's just been mm -hmm. raped by some mm -hmm. evil Muslims. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may right. be, whatever type of evil report that you get, Great. evil gangsters, whatever harm in your family. Oh, he cried the Lord, help me, Jesus. But see, on that day, God did it. It Esau. will be wasted. Yes, yes, yep. There will be no change. Thanks he saw it with tears. Bye -bye. Saw it deeply. And he was on the mm -hmm. earth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there was no change. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And a person has to understand, man, is that that rich man knew all the horrors of his life. Lazarus was comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's right. He don't remember no pain. Uh, uh, and it is it isn't affecting right. him. That's right. As he looks back, if he mm -hmm. ever sees it. Oh, that's right. Uh, this guy remembers his family's loss. Yep. Now he's not worried about his family. Nope, sure way. He doesn't open his mouth. <laughs> you know, uh, Abraham doesn't sorrow. Abraham gives him not one piece of sorrow. The metaphor of Abraham says, he had a good life and you want her basically paraphrasing. Yeah. That was had this. Now that was coming and you yeah, time. Mm -hmm. See, you know? They have five brothers. They laughs go back. No. No, because they have Moses and the prophets. If they were not in Moses and the prophets, neither will they hear one from the dead. Oh, can you come get it to dip? No, we're not dipping no water anymore. That's a great gulp, even if we wanted to, which we don't. Thank you. See, now, when you look at that, there's no comfort. There's no words of encouragement. Lazarus says nothing to him. Mm -hmm. Nothing about, I forget nothing. <laughs> nothing. And he was trying to change the order of what God set up. The order of, still a crook, wasn't he? Yeah, he's still setting up different commands. He's evil, even wow. in hell. He's setting up new commands in hell. Denying water, Father Abraham. Back to earth. Denying him. Nay, Father Abraham. Still a devil, even in hell. That's like Coral with Moses. Yes. They said, you think you're the high, you and Aaron, you guys think you guys, you know, we know we know much as you do too, and they try to get yeah. in the position of. I think Ron sucked him like a vacuum. Mm -hmm. You notice in hell, number one, one of the things at least, he receives no comfort. The speech or words shared are even more tormenting. Mm -hmm. Pointing out his error. Pointing out there's no hope. 
He also is belligerent as he was on earth, denying Abraham knows what he's talking mm -hmm. about. He sought comfort as all denominational people do. What do y'all do for the children? What do you do for sick people? What do you do for the elderly? What do y'all do for the community? Always got your hand out and your mouth open like a bird wanting something but bringing nothing to Christ mm. that he would even want to help you with. You. And the idea is when you look back at that, you look at that is no chance. Denying that the scriptures are valid enough. Yeah. Looking for a miracle, as Jesus said, on the evil nation looks for a sign, evil person. That I see while in the torments of hell man doesn't even change. He doesn't deny that he was a sinner. He doesn't deny that he was a dog of the earth and had many good things. He never says I, I treated Lazarus so bad or I could have did more for people like Lazarus. He's as evil as he was on earth. And that's how every lost man and woman will die. Mm. They will not die. That, see, that's the snapshot of hell. Mm. So why would God want that with him eternally? No, so no way, no so That's why I said. We talk about, you know, if a program a person, if a program take a walk through hell, he would change. Do you see change in that guy? I saw no change. Mm. I saw a belligerent, evil, angry man that still denied that God was right and all he had was his mouth open and his hand out mm. wanting help from the very person that sat at his gate yeah. seeking Desiring help. Desiring help. Desiring crumb. All that money he had, fair and subjects every day, you really think Lazarus should have been able to come to the gate every day? Mm. Something wrong with that picture, mm. man. Mm. But, you know, oh, that's right. but that's I want that's water it. from Lazarus. Mm. 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 Just a little bit. Anything will cool with these flames. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I bet it would. Boy, boy. Boy, boy. Boy, that's right. well, I'll tell you, boy, when I saw that after yeah, after we team. had that vacation Bible school, I said, that's no change in these heathens. Yeah, that's good. There's no yeah, change in the man that goes there. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's the same way he was when he was cast. That man, that's pitiful, man. Mm -hmm. That's a sorrowful state to be in. Yes, it is, preacher. I mean, you'd have think it been like, oh, Abraham, please, I, I know I was wrong. Look the argue his point. Nay, Father Abraham, nay. You know what you're talking about. Although y'all up there in total comfort, watching me in these flames, uh, Lazarus will come down and give me some water. Mm. No, but but if you send somebody back, oh no, Father Abraham, he don't know what he's talking about, but he ain't paradise and you ain't hell. Mm. See, when he was rich, when he was rich on earth, he used to negotiate. Oh, yeah, he, he could negotiate, could he? He, he was the man. He, used to, he had the money to negotiate. Yeah. But see, you can't negotiate in hell. Honey, ain't no good you know, in hell, yeah, is it? 